All right, what's up? Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Point Four. Today, we're going to be breaking down some very big news. My man, Andre Iguodala, has just been appointed the executive director of the NBPA. Then we'll go deep into the Sixers versus Clippers trade, how it's worked out, how it's looking, and Alon Tyrese Maxey a step up. 50 ball. 50 ball the other day. And then last but not least, we'll be going into an interview with the legendary Gilbert Arenas. So I can't wait to tap in, hear about how he was uh, a criminal early on, criminal mastermind, who turned into an NBA star. And make sure you follow, like, subscribe, point four on all the social channels. We're dropping it every single Wednesday. We got my main man, Andre Iguodala, with me. I am here. And you are him. I guess. I'm tired. I'm working. So obviously today, it's a Monday, it's a Wednesday we dropped this, but you just came from, I guess, your first official day of a, a nine to five. Yes. So did you feel like Harvey from Soups or anything? How did you feel today? Like, I was the first day at the office. It was good. You know, for me, it's... I'm just in a place where I'm doing a lot of listening. Yeah. And uh, we had a lot of great conversations. You know, we got some great things going on with the union. Um, you know, everybody's always trying to uh, become a better version of themselves uh, or take whatever they're trying to do to the next level. So I'm, I really was just in that mode. You know, I'm not coming in trying to, you know, have all the answers or be the hero or tell people what to do. It's more collaborative. And you know, we got some great folks in the union that have been working really hard. Um, but there's some things that I'm really excited to uh, push forward. You know, a lot of players um, hold a lot of value, you know, globally. And you and I have been having some interesting conversation on, you know, how I've become aware of that over time. And really just looking forward to interacting with the guys and take it to the next level. I think we continually um, get better and better, become a stronger union. And but now we're primed to go like like rocket takeoff. And so tell us about how this came came about because a couple months ago, or even talking about it, you're going to retire mm-hmm. and break into your mastery uh, mosaic fund mm-hmm. and run that fund where you're able to build two hundred million dollars worth of uh, value. But how did this come about? Lead in the union. When was the conversation popping up, and what was your first thought behind it? Were you like ah shit, or were you kind of taken back a bit. well you know first of all just honored that you know the executive committee uh brought it to my attention you know it wasn't anything that i brought to them or anything that i was searching for but when you're presented with certain things it's like you have a sense of duty to it you know especially with the game of basketball yeah. it's, it's it's really been so fruitful for us i mean we put the work in and we've created this value for ourselves but for me it was there's some things you can't say no to, right? even things you don't think you would do. And so it was naturally like, all right, I owe, I owe it to the game cause, cause, because of what the game has given to me and the relationship I've been able to build with the uh, the executive committees, I should right. say, not this, just, just this committee. And so um, a lot of respect for guys over the time that I learned from, like James Jones. Yeah. You know, he's killing it in Phoenix right now. Mm-hmm. You know, it took them to the finals. You know, what they've been able to do. Um, haven't got off to a great start this year, but some injuries have bitten them. But they're set up for success for a for foreseeable future. Yeah, you know, they, got, sure. they got a face of a league with a face of a league, mm-hmm. you know, with KD and, and Booker. And so um, I watched him during the Billy Hunter transition. Um, I watched James pretty much run the union, and that's when I first got on the executive committee. So I was able to watch him. Uh, Roger Mason, got to give a lot of love to. Yeah. And being alongside Chris Paul for all the time that I was with the executive committee, him being president and I was a vice president, first vice president, I was able to see how important it was to conduct business the right way or just be very intentional about how you conduct business. And so when the guys ask me, um, we got a pretty sharp crew, like big respect to those guys. I can go all the way down the line from, you know, Jalen Brown, Malcolm Brogdon, uh, Bismack Biyombo has been incredible. You read uh, Grant Williams. Yes, Grant Williams has been amazing. Um, uh, Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes is like my brother. Like, yeah. we played together, so um, 
a lot of love for him there, but to see him, he's our treasurer, to see him in that role and to see how he he is with his money. Like, yeah. you know how you always say, like, somebody ain't never going broke. Yeah. It's it's like, you know, never say it's, something's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible for Harrison Barnes to go broke. That's great. When you don't spend money, they rob your podcast. <laughs> so <laughs> do what you want with that. Uh, now I feel that, you know. Yeah, but, it, but then, like, seeing, like, the, like CJ, it's a... That's a tough role to take as like a main guy on the team. Yeah. You know, like Chris Paul was one of the first guys in the modern times. You know, I think Patrick Ewing might have been the yes. player president, but in the modern times with social media and all the stuff, the hits we got to take, and then, you know, Chris Paul having all his endorsements, like what he did with State Farm. Yeah. Um, I've been doing some research on that. Like, think about what, think about that. The marketing genius behind State Farm. Chris Paul. State Farm is an insurance company. Yeah. Do, if you take a step back and say, how can we market insurance? State Farm had one of the like one of the best commercials like that run. Yeah, of course. That State we've Farm. ever seen. Yeah, and 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 shoot, and it would have been better if, if somebody didn't cut off. Uh, what's my not not Steph Curry? Uh, what was his name? What was it? Sim it was Kurt. was it's it something. it was a Steven? It's probably Steven Curry. It's something weird when he popped out the lake. I don't know who shut that down. <laughs> but Chris Paul, you did your thing, but that Steph Curry joint would have went that next. No, time. but it's funny because the guy that's in the State Farm, the Jake, main guy, Jake. but it just let me know like the influence we have yeah. and like what we're selling as athletes. Like it, we're not. We're not only performing at the highest level with our sport, but we're essentially telling human beings how to conduct themselves, like how to have discipline, how to work through constructive criticism. You know, uh, league fits is like what guys show up to the arena now, like this is how you're supposed to dress. Mm -hmm. and like people are following our every move. We saw like Michael Jordan started it all, you know, in terms of like that influence. And now it's just so widespread. Influencers came from athletes in sports. Now we have influencers who have no, I gotta find the right word. They don't have a real talent. If we keeping it a buck, what the hood say, I'm just keeping it real. We're keeping it real. Yeah, what the young folks say, keeping it right. real, yeah. right? There's, but influencers have become some of the most valuable mm -hmm. content creators in the world because of the model like, this is cool. They're defining what's cool, but it came from athletes. And so that let me know how powerful athletes were. So when this opportunity comes about, it's like I have a duty to go in here and try to take it to the next level because that's all I'm trying to do. And like I said, I'm not doing it myself, but I'm using my accomplishments and everything that I've done yeah. to bring in the collective because I want to change. I want to change the name. I want to change how people address us. Yeah. I don't want people saying the union. Because if you look over the past year, all the unions have had have struggled with their deals with all the strikes. Yeah. You know, you can talk about the auto industry. You can talk about the entertainment with the writers and the actors. You know, like all these things are occurring. And um, Scott Galloway had a really good write up one week. Um, I, I follow Scott Galloway's uh, newsletter. It comes out every Friday, I think. And it was saying how the writers asked for like a five percent raise, and he was like, "They already they already lost because it's six percent interest rate. Yeah. So you you just you just back the square run. Yeah. You haven't even made, yeah. and they gonna meet you in the middle, so you gonna end up losing. Yeah, two and a half, and so yeah. just when he broke that down, I'm like, huh? And I think we just like the the there needs to be a transformation of like Union 2.0, and you just I think we should kind of try to not remove ourselves, but like change the narrative of how we call ourselves. Like we're the association, we're the collective. Like yeah. we have the most athletic, um, the most visible, the most valuable athletes in the world. We have the highest paid union, I think, or the highest paid union in the world as well. In terms of what we bring in. That would be interesting. You're probably right about yeah. that. And mm -hmm. even discussing the 450, thing 450, yes. we're starting to break down, not only being a huge union, but we're doing stuff that's innovative, right? Innovative in, in that situation in order to continue to build. When you first got involved in union in like what, 2013, 20, 2013, the basketball revenue income was what, like related income was like what, like 3 billion? 
It might have been less. Might have been no, you're right. 2.7? Yeah, 2.7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're flirting. Nine, ten. Ten billion dollars right now. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we're starting to sit here and say that, especially in the position we are in. You talk about the influence. After just cleaning up the bullshit from the union in 2011 and a lockout and, you know, putting the right type of people on staff where it's a crossover, not only just a basketball player, but an intellectual mind that can mm-hmm. perceive things. And even putting Chris Paul at president to, to be able to have the right type of value, it's like, yo, our union has jumped up tremendously in the value of it, like billions. Like, let's just yeah. say... In four or five more years, it might be at fifteen or sixteen billion a year, or even that if more. Like, mm-hmm. that's a crazy mm-hmm. level. And we're at a like unprecedented times in terms of what's next, especially watching this TV deal very closely. Yeah. And I look at that different now too. You know, being in this position, um, you know, I don't have the stress of having to worry about a collective bargaining agreement that mm-hmm. being that is six, seven years out. But I do have the time now to prepare us for, you know. You start preparing for tomorrow today. Yeah. Tomorrow could be in 10 years, tomorrow could be in 20 years, but you start planting those seeds. And what I've learned is, is that it's, it's a partnership aspect to this thing too. You're just really aware, you're in tune with your every mood and now that all your thoughts are surrounded by, okay, how can I cre- help create more value? And and then at the same time, it's, you know, you have other things going on as well. Like, mm-hmm. I, just, you know, I still got a fun going on. So how do I balance the time? Still a dad, like, too. <laughs> no, we just yeah. had a great conversation with Dwayne Wade about this. Yeah. I mean, it's all, like, hand in hand. It's like, whoa. Like, we, like things happen for a reason. You know, God has it set up for a certain way. And it's like, yeah, we, we you know, we're athletes and we struggle with what we struggle with. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I've had, you know, I'm going to be honest. And I think it's a good thing. Like, I've had some, like, tough nights where I was, like, stressed i'm talking like nightmares yeah like i lost some weight thinking about this like man can i really do this like you just get, yeah, no, you get yeah, super sure. nervous yeah. because you know where we come from our background and our community like there's trauma with you know certain businesses whether it's government or whatever yeah. and you're dealing with so uh, quote unquote the smartest people in the world and then you have to remind yourself like man isaiah did tell me i was one of the smartest I'm one of the smartest individuals in the world based on where I'm at in life. We all are. And you have to, that's how we have to remind ourselves. Yeah. And sometimes it's taken out of context, but that's what you got to do. You got to build yourself up to survive. That's true. So I want to take it back because you've done a lot of your work behind the scenes. And obviously people know that you're a vice president, Chris Paul is a president. But to a certain extent, I don't want this to be a shiny glass or like an overnight celeb type thing. Let's take it back to 2011, 2012, when I remember getting a text message from you along with a lot of other people trying to get everybody in a room in Vegas mm-hmm. to get, come together and choose a new uh, uh, executive, executive director. director. Yes. So I believe that was at July. We probably had like 80% of the league in a room. Mm-hmm. We had a lot of guys. We had a lot of guys lot in the room. Guys. We and passed I, out checks that day. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. You <laughs> told me. Incentives. Yeah, you were like, you want a $350,000 appearance <laughs> appearance <laughs> in Vegas. I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> I forgot I said that. Oh, I was so mad. It was my, <laughs> this man paid me with my escrow. Was that escrow? <laughs> I paid you with your own money. But yeah, I was about to kick your ass. I'm like, I'm, I want something more than this. But anyways, but it was, it was brilliant in a sense. I believe during that time when we mm-hmm. it was an opportunity to have four or five candidates right. in a room from from, the, from right. some of the top places and i believe uh we left there to sign on michelle roberts mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. was an amazing opportunity amazing choice and she ended up helping us yeah. shape things up and get us going yeah. to where we're at now she did there's two great things that came from that meeting michelle roberts mm-hmm. and then also a, a phrase that you put on back of your jersey during a bubble mm-hmm. where our man david West came up when he's asking each person that was interviewing what they felt on group economics and how they're going to lead us towards the situation so we won't be, you know, vulnerable when a lockout comes and they're just waving pennies over our head and we're we're breaking. Mm-hmm. And now we're pennies in, in relation to uh, revenues, folks. Yeah, yeah, pennies in relation to revenue and also just opinions in relation to what our value really is, bro. Yeah, like, you're yeah, sitting right 10 years ago, the NBA athlete was just viewed as shut up and dribble. You can literally get away with that. True story. And, you, and if you're a smarter or lawyer or whatever, you can get away with getting over on athletes, which is why the union was getting, you know, mm-hmm. taken advantage of. But now when you're sitting here and you're listening to David West scream Ruba Economics, how has that played a big deal in the past decade since you joined? And then moving forward in that sense, because now you're screaming value, 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 and it's all a direct, uh, you know, 
direct result of the group economics of us joining together and a whole bit of what a union is. Yeah, well, going back, you know, we 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 laugh about it because yeah. that's how crazy it was where guys would get kept turning around laughing like, man, what's this dude talking about? Like, I didn't know David. I only knew David West is a dude that broke my finger because he punched, he punched, stripped the ball. Yeah. Like, why are you trying to strip the ball <laughs> with your fist? He actually broke my finger. Like, my pinky is swollen. Like, it won't, it's, it's like this. Yeah. And um, I know David West is the mean, tough, hard-nosed player, you know, all-star in New Orleans, like, great player. And great, great um, minutes for the Indiana Pacers. It's great minutes for the Spurs. And then I played with him in, you know, in, with, with the Warriors, so I knew about him. But in that meeting, I'm like, yo, who is this dude? Is what everybody kept saying. And to me, I'm like, man, what is he saying? Let me go find out what this is. Yeah, okay. yeah. And... After you're doing some studies, I read this amazing book. Um, I'm always afraid to say publicly what this book is just because of, like, the power in it, you know. And so it was by uh, Manny Marble who wrote A Biography of Malcolm X, um, How Capitalism Underdeveloped Black America. And it just walked you through all the tactics throughout American history that has always been put in place through governance to keep us at the bottom of the barrel, you know. That's where crabs in the barrel come from, you know. And so it was like a fight against ourselves. And that way we'll never reach the top. We'll never be able to get there. And so reading that book opened my eyes. And that's when I like really grasped what group economics was. And I was reading it as we were going into the bubble. And so that's how I got group economics on the back of my book. Because I'm really deep into this book. And so what I learned was um, African-Americans uh, are the largest consumer spenders in the world, like per capita. Like based on how every dollar that we get, how much money we send out of our community on buying like consumer products, whether it be food, whether it be toys, just consuming yeah. things. We consume things at a different level, right? We don't spend the most money because we are a minority in numbers, but, and then our dollars are least recycled within our own community more than any other community. And so what I learned was like, you know, everyone's talking about generational wealth. Like that's the phrase of the, it's been a phrase of the twenties decade. And how do you build that? It's really recycling your daughter dollar from within, building your own businesses. But if you go back through, you know, history and time is the only time we've ever been able to build our businesses, what's happened to them? Talk about Black Wall Street. You yeah. talk about, you know, there was a bombing in Philadelphia. There's plenty of bombings throughout yeah. Florida, told the South. Yeah. Like every time we built that community and we've had that group economics, we've become a force to be reckoned with and it's been taken away from us. And so we keep being lost into like, how do we get it? That's the proper way to do it. Um, it's just sad that through our history, you know, there was a bombing in Springfield, Illinois. In my book, I've talked about yeah. it. You opened the book with a discussion. Right. Yeah. And so um, seeing that how powerful it was in that moment, the George Floyd moment, and then we just saw how powerful athletes were. Yeah, I heard you guys, um, the NBA committee board, made the Board of Governors pledge $300 million over the next 10 years to invest in opportunities in uh, African-American uh, uh, areas and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's huge, too. Yeah. We have a major committee. Now I'm a part of that committee now, being the the, uh, the acting ED. And so there's just so many powerful things that came from that. And then just, uh, you know, Chris Paul and myself throughout the bubble, you know, we had a we had a chance to get all the players together at the same time. That was, a, that, was the, that was probably the most players we ever had in one place. It was in a bubble after the George Floyd situation in Milwaukee decided to suspend the game. They, that perception was taken out of context too. They said they they said they said boycotted the game, but they decided to forfeit the game. And, you know, we came together, rallied around them to see like what their views were. And, you know, that was a beautiful moment because there were a lot of things that were said in that meeting. Um, if it ever got out in public, you know, it can do some damage to our rep and it's never gotten out. And I've really been proud of our players for that. And it's talked about, and that talks about the strength of the union. Yeah. Because even back in 2011, 2012, you've seen a lot of the articles or a lot of uh, the negotiations mess up because a lot of our information was getting out. We'd be in the meeting and it'd be and getting it'd be out. tweeted about or it'd be getting written about yeah. in real time. Yeah, I remember being there in 2011 and being like, how are we going to advance if y'all can't shut the hell up? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But yeah. like that, I, just going from that to being now in 2023 yeah. and being like, hey, it's hard to get behind them doors. True. You have True. people that comprehend, like, no, this is a real union. This union belongs yeah. to the players and, like, the people, you know, foregoing for that. You see a lot of times, uh, like you said, your attention is huge and big to help. Mm -hmm. So when it's coming down to, you know, in 
continuing to uh, help and push forward the game, not only a game in basketball, but like the people that it touches. What can you possibly do with that? And what's your, your focal point in that situation? Because obviously you can take care of the current players. We moved on to taking care of the, the past players. But now when it's coming down to it, what's, what's your focus on, you know, continue to try to, you know, spread the you know, spread the love in that sense in, in all formats. There's a lot of money to be going around. And even when it comes down to situations of the pandemic hits and, and we're, the players are donating money to the workers. Right. Right. You know what I mean? You hear sometimes people are screaming, even with the workers, it's like it's a bajillion dollars going around. Can we get a little bit more or whatever? Like what's what's something in regards to kind of heed that but bring in, you know, kind of, kind of spread the wealth? Well, I think it's about paying it forward. Yeah. It's a big part of it. And so I do think we have we have to fix the system of our youth sports. Yeah. You know, um, I think we have to embrace the world, the worldly fanfare of the game as well, especially with our international players. You know, and because and, as a player, I'm always, you know, I play for Team USA. You know, we got the best players in the world. And so when I hear a certain player, international player is good, I, I, no, you got to prove to me, yeah. like, we the best. But seeing how, you know, you had Dirks, you had the Paul Gasols, you know, you, you never really seen international players get their own shoe. Like Steve Nash, two-time MVP, he yeah. kind of had a Nike shoe, but, not really. but it wasn't really his name. Like it wasn't yeah. being, you know, so he didn't, you, didn't, you, you know, he was just cool, yeah. but he's Canadian, so it's still North American, you know. But now you're seeing Luca with a Jordan shoe. You know, you're seeing, um, you know, our relations with China um, and a lot of the shoe deals that are being done there, you know, just our... Our global appeal, um, you know, we have to embrace that more. And I think they are doing a better job of fostering the fundamentals of basketball onto their youth. Mm -hmm. And ours is a little bit more fragmented in terms of it's more so chasing the value of that athlete today. Yeah. Where before, like, why do we play basketball? Like, it was our outlet. It was our outlet. Mm -hmm. Like, man, I. Like I, life is rough. I'm gonna go outside and hoop, and then yeah. we just that was our trauma release. And now it's you have a kid, you force him to do something that's gonna make a bunch of money, because then you can, you know, it's like you investing in, you investing in, you know, your kid, yeah. and that leads to um, that product isn't gonna ha be as fruitful as something that's you know more organic, yeah, um, because it feels it feels forced. And you see all these European players coming over here and just dominate it. You know, our last couple of MVPs, you know, you got yeah. MB, you got Giannis, you got Joker. And then, you know, Joker's number one now. And then uh, Lucas and Giannis, they're like number top three. And then there's Tatum, you know. And so now, now they're having conversations of what? International versus USA All-Star game. And so um, for me, in terms of like, what do I see? Like we can, we can pay that forward. But a part of that is helping fix our youth yeah. sports system yeah. and getting the kids to understand like what it's really about and because because when you do that when you take care when you plan for the future to be taken care of like the benefits are like exponentially higher you know because the product is just better and when i say that like i also want i want to you know add this and i have to remind myself like this is a partnership with the league you know like we are in a partnership with the league um we feel like our value hasn't been of interest in the manner it should be. Right. Like you always say, we're always fighting for our value. Yeah. You know, and we know it, it will, I think everyone knows that it wouldn't be what it is without us, the players. Like, mm. you can find a, another billionaire. Like, there's billionaires by, like, they're coming up by the day now. Like, it's a new billionaire, like, almost every damn day now. Like, yeah. if you go back and see, like, how many billionaires were there 10 years ago versus how many billionaires there are now, yeah. it's yeah. like, it's insane. But it's only going to be 450 people that can. Play, in the league. play the basketball at a high level. And then even when you get there, you break down to 450, it's really only 10 that move the, meet, the needle like that. Yeah. Every, a bunch of, the rest of them can kind of like be interchangeable, not be replaced, but interchangeable. And so you just see the value that there is there, but that partnership is is very important. And there is a, is a the structure, um, the structure set up, it's important for us to, you know, have a respect to, the partnership and so I don't go into you know when I have to if if I have to put my foot down and say hey this is a disservice to my guys I gotta mm -hmm. be able to support them I'm willing to do that but at the same time I'm always thinking of all right how do we grow the pot you know do you need me do you need my help with 
pushing forward something like I'm in the tech space. Yeah. You know, I know Eddie Q, you know, I don't know if I can get a deal done with Eddie Q, but if it helps use me, that's the difference between athletes now versus 2010. You were just talking about that. Like, look how far we've come. Like I'm the bridge to something. Like Apple never did endorsement deals. But how many Beats headphones do you see in music videos? Apple owns Beats. Those yeah. are endorsements. Yeah. You even never Apple has never done endorsement deals. Yeah. Ever. Now they got LeBron. Yeah. You're right. It's just all the shit, his daughter, his whole family, everything like that. It's amazing. What's even more amazing right now? We keep uh, we don't want to get away from it, but we keep pushing the fold. You go back from nineteen fifty seven, Bob Cousy started mm-hmm. first union. Yeah. It was just for the sake of better travel. Twenty dollar paid fees and all this crazy stuff. They had, they had, they said a minimum. It was like we gonna put a minimum. We gonna put a stop to so many preseason games. Like we complaining about eight preseason games, man. Make it six games. Why are we playing so many preseason games? Yeah. They negotiate twenty Pre- game minimum preseason. pre-season. <laughs> I was like, man, what you trying to get right? <laughs> Every college that's season, that's a, yeah, like what? <laughs> and they came back with three, mm-hmm. three games or whatever. I think Bob Cousy, it was Bob Cousy, the beginning of the union was Bob Cousy. A few years boy, later, Tommy. he passed over to Tommy Heinsen. Yeah. Was, was fa- his father was worked for labor union. Was a labor union worker, yeah. and yeah. Tommy, his day job yes. was an insurance worker. Yep. So from there, he took that knowledge with union and everything, and he almost staged a boycott for the 1964 All-Star Game at the Boston Garden. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be one of their first national TV appearances or whatever, mm-hmm. and legit, had everybody in one locker room, had the cops outside the door, mm-hmm. talking to the, the the president of the MVP of the NBA and telling them like, yo, we're gonna sit out this game unless we literally get everything we demand. So And what Red Auerbach say? He was knocking on the door. If y'all get your asses out here and come play, <laughs> you never play again. <laughs> but they didn't go for the pump fake. They ended up getting what they needed. And now when you look back, you know, six C 70 plus years or whatever and see the influence the athlete has now to fast forward to not only going from you know a white athlete to a black athlete now right right and it's just like that's not what i'm thinking when i wake up but it can become a part of your cloth like what are you stand for what are your values you know like i said before we aren't all perfect but we can try to strive for you know the the model of you know those that are coming forth and um that's all I'm trying to do. So pressure wise, yeah, I've had nights where I'm like, man, this is a lot. Yeah. Like, and I, but then when I think about it, it's like, what am I trying to do? Put the right people around me? Yeah. Because it's more collaborative than anything. Like that's, that's what, what I'm learning. And that's what people don't understand. Yeah. Either. It's like when you break it down, it's like, bro, if I got the sauce, I had the talent, I got the ideas, cool. I don't want to hear about responding to an email. I'll hire somebody that respond to an email. Let me continue. Yeah to work and put my head down, we do everything as a team. You just put the smartest people around you and you you go learn with the smartest people around you. You learn how processes work, you learn how to build ideas, you learn how to, sometimes you gotta sit back, sometimes you gotta move forward. You just, you know, it's a constant evolution. Like every day is like, how can I get 1% better? Point, forward. You talk about having the right type of people around you, and uh, you know it, it's really huge on your success. So we spoke on earlier about from the Six Series doing that big trade with mm-hmm. the Clippers with James Harden, mm-hmm. going back home to LA, and you know the Six Series bringing over all the guys that they brought over. So a week out from the trade, the Clippers on like a five game losing streak. The Six Series are uh, they had some pretty big wins. Tyrese Maxey looks like a young James Harden himself. What do you think about that trade? And um, do you think, you know, the Clippers are kicking themselves a little bit? Well, it's it's twofold. You know, I will say on one side of things, you know, you got the Sixers who are just playing well. And sometimes it is addition by subtraction in terms of um, what they call it, you know, your usage rate. We all know. If you, you start filling that ball and you know it's going to get to you and you know you never have to press, the basket gets bigger, actually. You gain more confidence. You know, like when your usage is high, it's weak in the triple-double. Yeah, I'm and going it, back to I'm trying to get an extension. And, <laughs> and you got so efficient 
because you knew you had the ball in your hands and you were facilitating, you can get triple doubles off the bench. Like you got back to back triple yeah. doubles off the bench. It's never been done, right? Yeah. Okay then. Stop acting like you're not him. Okay. Thank you. That's not yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying like you when when you know where you're getting your looks from and how many attempts you're gonna get and you know like they're relying on you and you got somebody like Embiid next to you, it's just like you just get into good grooves. And so with James, he's a high use just guy as well. Kind of the situation that Clippers are going through early. But if you go back to the Heat, when they first got together, they they had a really slow start. It was all you remember that? Like I yeah. think we beat them. Oh, they did. We yeah. beat them yeah, like the did. first yeah. oh, season opener. Yeah, yeah we, we did. We beat the Heat. Yeah. And it was like, ah, oh, Miami ain't gonna do this. They talking about they gonna win four. They was they started that early. Yeah. Four or five. How many they gonna win? It looks like none. They they got to a bad start. Yeah. They still got to the finals. And so it's all about and then they they didn't go through training camp together. Cause James just got there. Yeah. So they weren't able to put that time in. And so I, it's a lot of chatter. You know, I just watched uh, Adam speak to um JJ Reddick, which I thought was really cool. And Adam spoke to this. There's so much great energy around the game, but he's he said I, I I wish we can change how we speak about the game. Like, we got so many great players, so much great gameplay. Like, there isn't enough talk about Tyrese Maxey's 50 because all anyone's talking about is, ha ha, the Clippers lost yeah. again. It's, you know, let's talk about the great things of the game. And so now everybody's trying to place, you know, either blame or who has to take less. You know, it's, it's, they always going to bring a Russ name. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Russ has been playing great. They Now they want to bother Russ again. Yeah. And it's I think they'll figure – I don't think they'll figure it out. They're too good not to. Those guys are smarter players than people know. Yeah. Um, I think I think they'll be fine, but it will take them some time. And they just got to get through this rough patch. Yeah. Like we we've had rough patches with some of those Warriors teams, and we still got to the finals. You yeah. know, that's absolutely true. I think one thing that occurs when it's coming down, I think it's a learning point as like a, a professional athlete. Not saying I ever hit this point, but sometimes skill doesn't matter as much as maturity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you're sitting there, you'll talk about the Warriors hit a rough patch. You also have a lot of people that want to make it work mm-hmm. and have a history of trying to make it work and be collaborative. Mm-hmm. You know, you might hear stuff from like, and Kawhi's one of my favorite players, so I never get it wrong, but you might hear Pop say, you know, well, Kawhi's leadership is a little iffy. And then you walk down the lanes and be like, well, I mean, I guess he always sits out, you call it this, and a third. You might look at the Paul George situation I know him personally. You might talk about his leadership situation Mm -hmm. or how he might always fall into little bro positions. Then you might do the ultimate leader and speaker and vocal individual, which is Russell Westbrook, and he might, every now and then, depending on how that shit might be rocky. Mm -hmm. And then you talk about, you know, James Harden, a.k.a., you know what I mean, like Mr. Cool, and to a certain extent, you add up that leadership and the time that gets put in. I, I would really want to see, I think this would be their first real time of all having to bond together, be accountable, and have to have results to what their leadership is. Huh. I think a lot of times they've never, ever been judged in regards to like being poor leaders more so than being, not poor leaders, but as opposed to being great players. You understand right. what I'm saying? Right. And, right. and I just feel like in order to get this going, you have to have a lot of people that are willing to sacrifice. I think sometimes historically, has anybody figured out ways to really sacrifice? These are it's a team full of guys that have left their respective homes and were good enough to be there their whole career to go on and go find somebody else after playing with some of the top players in the world. Like, James Harden left two MVPs, three MVPs. Russell Westbrook left a few MVPs. Paul George could have been an MVP, left a couple. Only person you can really say that doesn't matter, the environment is Kawhi. Mm-hmm. But you just don't know when it's drowned out by three of the four. You feel me? Because personalities in the locker room can really overtake a lot of different things. And to a certain extent, if it's not going to be on the vibe of the Celtics when – in 08, when KG came, paused and was like, yo, Paul's going to sit right here. Ray's going to sit right here. And we're all going to do this as a unit. Only thing I've seen coming from the Clippers so far, which only been a week, is a GQ cover. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and past clips of conversations that kind of seem a little different that hasn't been spoken about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now we're sitting here like, right, is everything going to hit or fit all because they do the same Dougie? And walk with a slew foot. 
You feel me? <laughs> and that's, that's why. You, you feel what I'm saying? And, I, and I, I think those dudes are too talented. Like I said, Ka- Kawhi Leonard wins 70% of his game, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. But I want to see how that goes. I'm a big uh, – I'm a big fan of what the Sixers are doing, but um, man, that playoffs, those, those two change too much when it comes to our <laughs> playoff time. Well, we spoke about this before, about where we're in a unique time in basketball where it looks like there are a bunch of teams that have the chance. Yeah. And it could change week by week. Like, we know what Denver can do. Um, Milwaukee, it's like, you don't know what you're going to get, but they can get hot, and you'll be like, Milwaukee's going to win it all. Yeah. But then you also, the Warriors started off hot. You'd be like, oh, yeah, I thought the Warriors were out of it. The Warriors are back. They got two starting lineups. Yeah. Their second five is playing just as well as their first five, and that was the issue last year. You know, and it's funny because with the draft game odds now, it's almost like they flip-flop the Sixers and the Clippers. The Clippers have dropped to like eight, ninth. Yeah, I think the Clippers are at like uh, what nineteen hundred plus nineteen hundred to win. The Clippers are eight with nineteen hundred. Yeah, plus nineteen hundred uh, odds to win. Uh, the Sixers have moved to sixth with plus fourteen hundred. Um, and if they continue to play this well, Tobias Harris is playing really well. And, and I'm gonna be can play. I've been screaming this for four or five years. Tobias is playing well. When I was playing in the West with Tobias Harris, I was like, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you. That's one of the best wings in the league. How he's not an All Star is crazy. Go to the Sixers. You know, I guard Ben Tobias and everything. Mm-hmm. So I was switching off guarding him. I say this to this day. I'm like, bro, to develop Ben took away from Tobias's game. Mm-hmm. Not for nothing, but like that whole second unit. They ran all the plays for Ben. You know how crazy that is to run all your plays for Ben when Tobias Harris is existing? Well, I think it's to make Ben the most effective. No, I'm not mad at that for sure. I'm just, no, I, I'm just, I'm just saying that's probably was the reason. I'm not saying it was the right or wrong reason. Oh no, of course. But, you know. but I'm just speaking up for Tobias because the past three or four years, people in Philly would love to bring in his contract his production level, like it wasn't 18 points per game as a third or fourth option. That's all I'm saying. And But those are good betting odds DraftKings are doing yeah. for, like I would bet a little bit on both of them. I'm not, the Clippers, 1900, plus 1900 to win? Well, I will say, I think the the unlock can be someone like a P.J. Tucker. Because, and I'm saying it like this. Yeah, I feel you. I'm, on, I'm basing this off what you said in terms of how individuals or people have doubted the leadership skills of the superstars yes. on that team. And we just spoke to PJ and then how he was in in Bede's grill unlocking him. Right, right, right. And yeah. like I've been in that position. I was next to Sean Livingston and kinda of how we our conversations on are you guys or me me and me and Loon do the same thing. Loon and myself. Uh, Loon what you see and this guy we got to unlock him. He kind of struggling right now. All right, I got to I gotta get a relationship with him. I'm going to go holler at him. Or this guy, Loon, you got to go get this guy. I think PJ can be that guy that can keep things intact. And especially the way he plays with that passion and energy. Like we've seen PJ have a plus 35, plus or minus, and not have any points yeah. consistently. Yeah. I'm not talking about just one night, just yeah. two nights, but it was like PJ had zero. And I always went to his plus minus. It's like, ah, you can't say nothing to him. Yeah. He's doing something right. And then he's getting reintroduced to the team. He's feeling his way around his environment. Uh, Zubak is going to be important for them. Uh, Bones Highland is going to be really important for them. Yeah, if he's going to play, he's got to be really important. Norman Powell. Norman Powell might be that that guy. Like if he plays consistently at a high level and they rely on him deep in the playoffs, they got it. They got a chance. And he also has a championship pedigree as well, which is yeah. an understatement. You don't understand, like you said, the climate mountain is. Paul is bigger than anything else. So, yeah, PJ Wynn did that with the with the, with the Bucks. Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm looking forward to all of it. I think uh, it'll be a hell of a year. I believe the Clippers are going to be able to turn it around for sure. I'm not shocked at that. Shout out to Philly. I'm uh, happy for the kid Tyrese Max. We keep forgetting about Tyrone Lue. Yeah, he's one of the best coaches in the league too. Every time it gets important, for some reason, Tyrone Lue figures it out. And the only thing that takes out Tyrone Lue is what? An injury. Yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. Shout out Tyrone Lue. 
Because y'all didn't want to give him the job neither. That's <laughs> just crazy. Y'all went all the way to Europe and said, you know what, David Blatt? Coach him. <laughs> in the NBA, the game can change in an instant. But no matter how the action unfolds, you know DraftKings Sportsbook has your back. This week, new customers can score 150 instantly in bonus bets just for betting 5 bucks on basketball. Win or lose, you get an instant dub. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code POINT for it. New customers can get 150 instantly in bonus bets for betting just $5 on basketball. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code POINT for it. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 8778 hope Wire, text hope 467-369. In West Virginia, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Please play responsibly. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-777 or visit ccpg.org. On behalf of Boothill Casino and Resort, Kansas, must be 21 or older in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash basketball terms. Point forward. Today's interview we bring to you the best player out of the University of Arizona. We had a lot of fun talking to Gilbert Arenas in his playing days, how young he was while he was doing all that damage, and how he's transitioned into um, an interesting media guy off the court. Hope y'all enjoy it. And say his name like Arenas. Too. Arenas. 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 What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Point Forward Podcast. Myself, Andre Godala. My name is Evan Turner. Uh, we got a, a fun one today. Um, this is one of my favorite players uh, of all time, actually. You know, I've, I've said this a few times, uh, given interviews, they asked me who was the best player. Uh, they talk about other players from Arizona, and I always have to remind people, the best player to ever come out the University of Arizona. Um, we used to call it the, the University of NBA, uh, Gilbert Arenas. So, um, welcome to the show, Gil. Thank you. I don't think you know your name in my phone. It is Gil Dash Nutso from the movie. What movie was that? Above the Rim. You don't hear that Nutso? The boy said he owes you. Um, but welcome to the show, man. I really oh, appreciate thank you, you pulling thank up. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Point forward, like so, because y'all point forwards. Yeah, something like something that. Like that. It's yeah. clever. Yeah. A play on word. You know what I mean? Okay, because yeah. y'all kind of small to be like the forward part of the point. What you mean? We six seven small for it, not not big oh, for it. Okay. We not nah, the Draymond no. joints. We okay. the old school. <laughs> no, <laughs> not the old school joints that are not supposed to be before okay. they let Giannis start dribbling all that facts, other bullshit. Facts, so facts. yeah, so like a little version of Lamar Odom, basically. Okay. Lamar was different. Lamar was so Scotty Pippins. Yeah, Scotty. Okay. Scotty's still six nine. Yeah. What was Wasn't magic? he six nine? Scotty won six nine. Scotty six nine. I'm talking about six seven. Six seven. Scotty six nine. Yeah. Seven. When was the last time you seen Scotty? I played golf with him like two years ago. And he was 6'9"? Do you have a sample? No, before, before, the, before <laughs> the pandemic. This, this was 19 then, 1920. Scotty's 6'9". Have you seen his height after, after he lost his woman? Damn. At 6'7", he probably lost two inches. They say uh, the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's so we on point four. We, <laughs> we are not on Gil. No Chill Gil. Yeah. Uh, or what's that? Uh, Gil's Arena. Gil's Arena, which is live. Yeah. Uh, I do want to tap into that. Like you've been doing some amazing things in the basketball podcast uh, content creation space. And you started with the blog on the NBA.com mm -hmm. when, when I was young in the league. And, um, you know, I spoke on your show, uh, which is a beautiful setup. You know, first the question is, how did you come up with that idea? with the blog? Um, you know, it was the, I think the NBA was experimenting on like weekly diaries. And I remember it was like me, um, I think Dunleavy was one of the, one of the, one of the guys, but everyone was dull. Correct. Right. You know, you read yeah. it, just, I don't know. Yeah, today I woke up and <laughs> yeah, had a couple yeah, of crates <laughs> and I pondered my thoughts and wondered what winning means, that type of that, shit. Yeah, so it was just like, I'm gonna just be entertaining, just whatever. And then, you know, people started gravitating to it. So I actually took it serious, mm. right? You know, started thinking of stories, you know, like um, writing down thoughts of like yeah. what I was really thinking. So at the end of the week, I really actually had the thoughts that I was mm. thinking then, right? So like, I really was putting production thought into, you know, the blogs and uh, it was fun. I'm not even gonna lie, it was fun. So, I mean, for to sum that up, because obviously we, we speak on a lot and sometimes when people go through certain stuff you went through, how were you able, I talked to Dre yesterday, how were you able to smile through the bullshit and like remain yourself and kind of keep 
keep your aura about you? Because it seemed like even throughout everything, you never had a bad day. Or like you never let it, like a downfall keep you down. Like you, I mean, you back up like shit, Mike Tyson was. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. you literally back up like like gold. Like, and it takes a lot of confidence and, and strength to do that in the midst of a crazy world, especially in the PR world where you're, you know what I mean? Um, When I stopped caring. And when was that? Okay, I stopped caring before. I was. I didn't care oh, okay, before. Okay. Yeah, I didn't care before. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but, you know, after, you know, the situation in the locker room and, you know, it was that I do 100 things, I do 99 things right, one thing wrong, and my whole character and everything is off of this one thing. Then what's the point? Right. What is the point? If, if, if it takes one thing to tear down everything and this is all you're going to remember, Right. So, you know, I was depressed. Like I was depressed for a while. And then when I thought about it, why do I care? If I can't, if I can't be perfect and we're not perfect, then I'm just going to do it my style. Mm. Right. So now when I come back, you can't tear me down. <laughs> you can because I'm, I'm going to be built, be built for what you have installed. I, mm. I seen you guys' playbook. See, I didn't see it before. Mm. Now I know your playbook. Now I know. If I say something that I believe and you come at me to apologize, no. I'm actually, I'm going to double down. I'm going to go worse. You come at me, I'm going to go worse. <laughs> I'm, like I, when I say something, I give you the, the A part. I can go all the way to Z if we want to do this. Right? You're going to break way before me. And that, that's been my style since. And But you have this ability to see deeper than what's on the surface, especially with players. Mm -hmm. Like your commentary on basketball is at a genius level, in my opinion, right? I, I can I can honestly say that. Like, I don't say that about people. Mm -hmm. And and we've had many conversations about, you know, this is going to happen. In the, like, you're telling me what's going to happen before the game happens. And I'm like, damn. And I've always respected your basketball uh, perspective. But looking back at yourself, like, why was Gilbert the way he was at Arizona? You know, why all the stories that I hear, you know, and, and knowing that you're this brilliant individual, did you know that about yourself back then and you just chose to go that way? Or what was it a what was it that, you know, you were trying to release that had you doing some of the stuff you was doing because you're you're a brilliant athlete, not just athlete, but an individual as well. Immature. Mm -hmm. I grew up on Dennis the Menace. Right. <laughs> Dennis the Menace, you know what I mean? Dennis the Menace, Dennis the Menace, Problem Child, yeah. like those were my yeah. <laughs> those were my movies growing up. Right. So, you know, when I got to college, you know, I'm young, so mm -hmm. I didn't really fit into to much of anything. Um, you know, you know, me and Jason Gardner, you know, we're teammates. You know, we're we're, we're he's just as crazy as me, right? Right. But I, because my personality was really extreme. And that's what made me good, right? That, you know, you can tell me something, five miles, five, do it. And then I can go run five miles, five miles every day for a week, bet, right? That was the, but I'm also paintball, you can't hit five cars in a row, bet, right? I right. was just extreme with everything. Um, and I got to thank Lute Olsen for not penalizing me on the court for what I was doing. Like I'm still in the golf carts, Right, I'm doing all that. Right? I'm still like, you jump out security, I'm jumping in, I'm gone. I right? take that to the crib. <laughs> I didn't care no, about like, not. like yeah. I just, <laughs> the, the stuff I was doing, bro, I should have been in jail, jail. Like it was just, but it was just like, it like it wasn't from bad intentions. Mm -hmm. was right? it, it was, I was having fun. Yeah. It was just real yeah, dangerous yeah, yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. For sure, for like, sure. Like I, I want to have, you know, um, can I go to like I want like close to jail? <laughs> so I, I, had you? Um, oh, I haven't. I haven't told you about the crazy stories that I've heard about him from college, right? Like insane, right? Like he is some people he was beefing with, and he went and attacked their property, but it wasn't their property; it was public property, right? The park. <laughs> <gasps> oh, that story. Oh, look. Okay, look. <laughs> this ain't. Are you gonna state that? No, no, no. I, no, I he didn't mistake uh, it. That's just what that was. They said. That's oh, where he hung yeah, out yeah. at. Yeah. Okay, so we ain't got to dive into it if you want to. No, no, no. So I'm, 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 I'm with my my girl at the time, and you know, they were poor, right? They was college kids, so they were living in the hood. So you know, summer's over. I mean, season's over with. So it's summer. I didn't go back to Cali, so I stayed. So right. I'm just shacking up with them. 
right? In the ghetto. But you know, you got all this Arizona nice gear yeah. on, right? right. So right. cross street park, all hood, all drug dealers, everything, right? So, you know, they mess with me. So, you know, come in and out, you know, I got my, you know, the the, the car, I got the Lexus and, you know, yeah. so they see it, like, right. uh, right? <laughs> but I'm not, it's, I'm not really thinking yeah. about none of that. I come home one day, man, and, you know, like, you know, you watch Cold Street look, and they got on, like, Arizona gear. Oh, man. Little Arizona now, huh? Wildcats, okay. woo-hoo! Yeah. <laughs> right? right. Go, go in the house, they done ransacked, every, they done stole everything. So I go back outside and they just post it up. Oh, oh, that, oh, that's what we doing. <laughs> oh, oh, they think I'm not crazy. Yeah. All right, man. <laughs> right. So I told, I said, so I find out when when do we move out of here? Like when do when do we move out? And it's like, oh, we got about three weeks. Bet. So I'm just buying gasoline. I right? just I ain't got no just gasoline in it up. All right. Last day. Whole park. <laughs> Boom. Uh-huh. Drug dealer set gone. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, ain't no, ain't no more business done in this uh, park no more. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny part is, the fire department was like, eh. Because <laughs> it was, a, yeah, it was one of those yeah. situations that <laughs> they didn't know how to handle. It was handled. <laughs> little gasoline, little, little match. Good. Damn. Cleaned up the neighborhood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> right? Psychoanalyze that for me. I like how you go that far, because I, I I didn't I did some wild stuff. Because I mean, some people say it's no level for a reaction, and then at the same time, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's just, come on, bro, you gonna rob my shit to be across the street from my house? <laughs> like, if I had a gun, I would have killed you. Well, you know, <laughs> like, it's like, but, but you're thinking like, what what do I do? Yeah, sure. yeah. Like it's like, what do I do? What is the best thing? It's just all right, just just get rid of the whole park. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I, I like. I just I couldn't go over there and fight him. Yeah, it's an impulse. Impulse yeah, yeah, buy. Yeah, <laughs> not that was planned. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now, so now I'm gonna translate this because there's my question. I'm trying to wrap it together. <laughs> but do you think people know how good you were? N no. Um, if we if you played against me, you know, then you 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 would know. Um, but from the outside looking in, you know, you're you're just gonna look at the stats and then just remember glimpses of like, no one knows how good any of us are. True. This is very true. Right? This they they, true. they don't know until they come up close and they encounter. Yeah. And they're like, oh nah, he's no, nah, he's a he's a basketball player player. Yeah. <laughs> he's a basketball yeah. player player. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, nobody really knows until they really in that lion's cage. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't really respect like analysts. Mm -hmm. Like you didn't have to guard me. You lucky you didn't have to guard me. Like, but you tell whoever you think is the best defensive player, tell him to say the same thing you're saying. I guarantee they won't. I guarantee they won't. Like, you say he was a great defender. Now, tell him to say the same thing you just said. It's not going to happen. Right? So, you know, I, I go off of, you know, players that I played against. That's, that, I'm fine with that. Oh, yeah. So at what point, you know, when it comes down to we talked about it, um, you know, that you know that, it was at that level where I'm here. You know, your first year, you kind of had your up and down moments and everything, barely played. But at what point, who'd you up against besides the Kobe 60-point game where you're like, oh, this is, this is a this is this is my time, my role? Basically, when did it get easy? Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 just every night. <laughs> I mean, the game was, the, the game was always easy. Um... Cause I dealt with it in angles, um, but I knew the game was really becoming easy when I'm the point guard and then you're guarding me, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you're that scared, right? That you got to put small forward on, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. right? It's it's it becomes a, a point where now I'm manipulating yeah. the game, yeah. right? I want you to guard me so now I can go one foot flat and have the foot advantage, right? And then, you know, like, okay, he subbed up. Okay, now I'm going in the post, get yeah. this post work. So once I start really manipulating how the game is being played, that's when I knew it was becoming too easy. Yeah. And then now, now it becomes, now I just got to taunt, 
Right, you know, start doing a little dance and like, yeah. I, like I, you know, like the John Moran does that, but you know, I'm throwing a little. Uh, back then, it was the uh, uh, pop a snap, yeah, pop. snap and pop, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. lean with a rock with it. But I, I trained so much, watched so much film, watched body language, body um, mannerisms, right? Knowing, okay, I got to look at the arm length, right? So when I go by him, I know his first swing is going to be behind. So let me dump it in front because I know if I catch it to this hand, he's smart enough to go here and here, right? So I got to understand what that player's doing. So like be, from there, it just becomes natural, right? You know, so I'm practicing, all right, go by, dump it first because he's going to go swing, swing, right? And then from there, if he swings, swings, okay, I know he's not gonna, he's not running and jumping, right? So I know he's he can't block me if he swung that way and swung that way. That's going to be hard, right? Mm -hmm. If he didn't swing, he might jump. Right. So now I got to know, OK, maybe I can stop depending on who's going, you know, so now I'm calculating everything yeah. all at one time. But that's the playbook for him. That wouldn't be the same playbook for you. Right. So I had I I had to work on different things for different type of players. Like everyone has a package for just their package. Like, no, you don't have the same package for everybody. Yeah. I, like I, if I'm posting up and doing all this, then I go against you, too. I'm done. Like, yeah. Just, yeah, be, just sitting there, just yeah. Yeah. pass the ball. Yeah. Nah, I got this. Then you go for the right to the left. Yeah. Like, yeah. Shit. I only know how to use a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> no, so take all that, right? You you knowing like, oh, this is easy to me, and, and I'm different. Is there a uh, is there a force maturity as well, there for you in terms of like like you talk about Joel? Like, there's a different responsibility now that I'm this good. Mm -hmm. Did that happen before? Did it happen for you while you were playing? Nah, you were I, still you. I was, I was like, I like, I, I got hurt at 25, right? You know, so I'm still immature, right? I, you know, um, you know, sometimes how you come into the league, yeah. you kind of stay the same, yeah. right? So if you're mature, then you're gonna be mature, yeah. right? Uh, if you're immature, you're gonna be immature unless yeah. you find a woman that's gonna. Right. You know, or you round some vets that's aging you, right? You know, if you drunk Shirley Temples and, you know, Malibu as a rookie, oh, God damn it, that's your <laughs> yeah. Um, So I didn't really get to, like, really mature as a player, take that role as uh, the leader. Um, like, I'll have moments where I'll, like, yo, nah, fuck all that, what we doing? Other than that, you know, if I shot some wild shit, you, you have the same right. ability. But if you do it, I ain't gonna pass your ball again. You know what I mean? But I'm, <laughs> but I'm never gonna yell. Like, I'm never gonna yell at a player for doing some shit that mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. Like, even if we're not on the same level, you, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you the same, you know, it's just your your job to really yeah. put in that work. Yeah, so, um, the locker room was my playground. Oh, I heard. And I, but that was, that was the problem. I didn't understand that until now, right? I, I'm in the gym, you know, nine o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning, six at night, 10 at night, three in the morning, right? I'm there by myself so much, uh -huh. learning the floor. Like I'll make the owner put the floor down. I want to know the dead spots because of the ice. Like I really was, tr I was doing all that. Where did the cold breeze come from? Um, when I seen teammates, it was fun. My niggas is here, like the right, playground. Right, right. Yeah, what's up, y'all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I'm in play mode, not realizing they're coming to work. Right, so like when people say, "Yo, oh yeah, has all these outside issues," no, 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 that was that was an arena. That's that's all arena stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the arena outside. I, I'm not getting pulled over for drinking and driving shit like that. It's just inside the yeah. locker room because that's where that was my playground. That was my, you know, my space. And do you think that was a kind of way of your leadership, like the relatability? Sometimes True. you might get some superstars when you sit there and it's like, you don't talk to him. He thinks he's like a, a symbol, a vibe or whatever else. But like the camaraderie or sometimes you hear where, you know, that could extend the, you know, the chemistry on the court. And, you know, anytime, you know, your, your star is in there, you know, interacting with the players, sometimes it can be great team building as long Very as it's true. not. Too crazy. Don't you think that you guys are pretty tight knit? You guys are making the playoffs, doing all this this dope stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was I was more I was a bridge player. Yeah. Where I can bridge the old to yeah. the young. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, um, 
I was that I was that rookie that you always wanted to be a rookie with. Yeah. Right? Because when rookie Hazen comes, you get easy because they focused on me the whole time. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah, that's, that's how they would do me. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but it wasn't good. It just they just like bothering me. <laughs> yeah, like, like I was the I was the rookie that like I, I was like the king of rooks. Like so, like I'm, I'm, the, king <laughs> like, I'm the king of rooks. So like me, Jason Troy, Jason's, you know, the fifth pick in the draft. Troy, mm -hmm. you know, is, you know, mm -hmm. Troy Murphy's lottery. Mm -hmm. I'm 31, but y'all can't like I'm the one like y'all can't talk to them, right? Like I was that dude. Oh, like you can't talk to him. You're number five pick. You yeah. was fucking 40 when you played. Yeah. Shut up. Like yeah. he ain't, you ain't picking that nigga bags up. Like that's who I was. <laughs> Like I was oh, an actor, like I was doing that. Like I'm big boy. Like yeah. Jay, now we gonna big boy him. He 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 got an S five hundred, bro. Jay got an S six hundred. Right? He made more than you. Like that that was me. So you know they didn't focus. On, they didn't focus on it. They spent their time trying to break me. Like because they break me, they automatically get them, and that ain't happening. My these rooks ain't holding y'all bags. They lotteries. Like I was that dude. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was always like the bridge guy that can bridge like. You know, like the the vets to the youth, right? Like, um, like with Nick, Good I job, remember man. like um, we're playing Miami, and like I really need Nick today, so I'm hyping him. Like, as soon as we start, I'm like, yeah, hey, hey, we gonna go at D Wade because he can't play no defense, and like D Wade's like, I was like, nah, he about to give you all that work. Right. And I was like, I'm only calling you up. Twine, you're not getting the ball today. I'm only calling you up. Like, I'll be, <laughs> right. And he was like, if you look at, he gave D Way about 20 something. Right. Like, like, and I'm gonna score, give it to him. Yeah, we yeah. run the same play way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he was like, who is this dude? I, hey, shit. The player I need right now. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Uh, so, no, the Nick was such a like great talent. talent. Yeah, unbelievable. And I used talent. to be like, Nick, stop playing. Like, you know how good you are. And I feel like he fell into, and that's like my brother, so I can, I feel like I can speak on him. It was like, Nick, why are you afraid to be great? And and he would get the 10 points, and by then I got the 10 points. I'm good. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's playing an analytic game to get paid, but like he was unbelievable. Oh my God. Unbelievable. Nick I, Young is unbelievable. I don't, and, and you know, I don't think people really understand that's a thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some players are afraid of it's like scared of heights, right? You know, I'm I'm you know I'm cool right here, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. safe right yeah, here. Yeah. And I think I I don't. That probably was my fault too. Like um like as as a a, a, a superstar talent is what I'll say I was close to, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think I did a great job showing them my work ethic. So they didn't see you in the gym all the time? No. Okay. So that's the one thing that I didn't pass along, that I was in the gym that much, right? You know, being in the gym early, by the time they get to the gym, I'm stretching and stuff, Yeah. right? You know, when they, you know, they start after, I go home and then I come back six o'clock and I'm two in the morning. So they didn't really see the work ethic. So when the young guys came in, I'm hurt. So I'm in play mode. So he doesn't get he doesn't get the three four times a day. He yeah. gets Gil that's you know going to the club for the first time, trying to see what kind of girls he's gonna pick. So that's the that's the NBA. It's like the Adrian Broner to yeah yeah to Javante Davis. Davis. Nah to Mayweather. Oh Mayweather. Oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's true. He don't yeah, yeah. he yeah. he has the talent yeah, yeah. but he don't yeah. see he wants yeah. money made. He yeah. don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He don't more. see. He didn't yeah, see this yeah, Mayweather, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. And I think, and that's where I kind of like dropped the ball on 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 a young that I ain't really teach them like the work first, then the play. So you know, I'm transitioning to, you know, you're, you know, one of the top analysts. I feel like respected by NBA players, and so I gotta ask this question: How do you analyze players and give that criticism of a player? while still being able to hold that relationship. I think I, I think as players transition into these roles, you know, they're trying to play both sides, but they don't have that that skill set to be able to maneuver and still be able to critique a player without it being considered, you know, you offending me or you're attacking me. How how do you think about that? Or do you just say how you feel? Yeah, I said how I feel, but because it's not personal and I'm not biased, I I can stay close to the middle. Right. And and I think sometimes it become a per, like 
I'm not attacking the person, just the game, mm -hmm. just your on the court game. And I don't think a lot of analysts know how the difference between the court person and the off court. I remember someone was saying it. I forgot who it was. It's like, yeah, you know, this is about Kyrie's, you know, basketball, you know. And I was like, oh, I need to hear this. I turned it up. And the first thing he says, you know, not taking the shot. For there you go. That's that's that the basketball. The basketball is when the game starts. Doo -doo, that player. Now that player is amazing. Yeah. So if you're gonna judge the player, judge the player. Judge his skill set on it. He comes to play every time he steps on the court. That's not like the, you're trying to talk about that person by using this scenario. So I try to stay away from personal. Um, and if I'm wrong, I can say I was wrong. And I, I don't think a lot of people understand that. Like, right. I like you today, might not like you tomorrow. Might, might make, like you next week. So if you do something good, I'm going to say what you did good and how you developed as a player, right? Like, you know, like, like people thought I was hating on Giannis, right? Yeah, I mean, we got that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but it's coming, like, if you sit back and understand what I'm saying, <laughs> right? He's an MVP, champion, double MVP, right? Yeah. Champion. Yeah. Doing what he does now. I'm saying if he learns a mid-range, learns a post-up, what can he be? Mm -hmm. And if you say, well, he don't need to be nothing. Now that's your fucking problem. You're content yes. at what this is when there's a greater version of this. I'm trying to say get to the greater version, just like when Kobe challenged him and said, win MVP, do this. Hey, I'm not saying how Kobe's saying it. I'm, right. I'm more rugged with it. Right. Right? Get, get, just get, beat Tim Duncan. Now, if you add Tim Duncan with your skill, you're a whole nother player. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, yeah, if he did that, that's all I'm fucking saying. Yeah. Well, is that why with the pod and everything, when uh, Gil's Arena, you have like Rashad McKins, you have Josiah Johnson, you have, uh, you know, Kenya Martin, Kenya yeah. Martin, Brandon Jennings, Brandon Jennings, unconventional yeah. people, I guess, per se. But when it comes down to it, real recognized, real, and you, you know, is, are those peers and opinions where you're like, no, I, I only need Hooper environment and, you know, talk that real? Yeah, it's, it's, we all have different situations, right? We all have our different stories. We're all, we're good at what we were good at. So for us to, you know, go and speak, we, we you need different elements. Like even though Josiah, like he, he played basketball, but he stops at a college level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to NBA, can't do that. That ain't it, right? That's what y'all are here for. Yeah. So even if we ask him for his opinion, he'd be like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not the pro. Don't ask me shit. <laughs> right. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, um, you know, just getting hoop heads who really under understand, but just like anything like locker room, right. We don't agree. You know, we don't agree because we, you know, you, you know how we was talking the other day about, uh, a leader, his vision of a leader is always the best player. And I'm like, man, that's not how it works. Right. <laughs> that's not the case all the time. Right. You will hope it's easier right, to have the leader as the best player. It makes it Michael Jordan. You get the Michael Jordan, right? But for the most part, sometimes that just don't align like that. You know, you know, you can have L.A. argue who is the leader between Magic Johnson and Kareem. Yeah. They can argue all day about that, and both going to be right. So how does Gilbert Arenas define success? What is the definition of success? I think everyone has their own definition. So, like, I have a definition of it. Let me hear yours. And I tell teams this all the time. If if your full potential of this team is to win 27 games and you win 28 games, you had a successful year. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying what someone else said you were supposed to do, but like a realistic view of what, yeah. what peak you is, like your ultimate self. You always say this. Mm -hmm. We just, you just said this about Giannis. Like you can have another level you can reach if you do certain things on the court and it's attainable. You just got to figure out how to do it. And so that should be everyone's goal. And I feel like if you can reach it and like, you know, I talk about Miami Heat, like they're going to get every ounce out of you that you, they're going to get some out of you. You didn't know you had. And if you do that, that's success in my eyes. Everybody that makes it to the NBA is successful in my opinion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I always say that you made it to the league you're successful. Don't let anybody tell you that you were uh, a bust 
We've had you've had you've had some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was some interesting. Money. That was interesting. <laughs> you know, because I I did understand both sides, but like he could have got more out of his career, but he was put in a certain situation that made it. You know, I think he was successful. Mm -hmm. You know, especially coming from where he comes from, and so that's my definition of success is basically um, reaching your full potential. Well, 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 then, 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 do we ever? If it's full potential, do we ever, ever reach our full potential? Because we're evolving all the time. All right, yeah, and that's, that's it. I mean, the humans are But you got to evolve. So evolve yeah. Evolving is part of success, too. Yeah, of yeah. course. I mean, it's the next level and seeing what the next challenge is. So yeah. I, I think it's always... I would say there's no failure own, in it. Yeah, and it's always your own personal journey, too. Yeah. So shit just, like, the elements are going to change and it might just be something different, bro. Right? Like, you know, it's literally it's like, Having a kid, can you still be successful? Why, you know what I mean? Like, what level you at at that level? So, I, I think, yeah. So it's 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 I guess steps, right? Never ending steps. Um, and every step you you make that should be a notch of success for you, right? Um, mm -hmm. There's no there, there's no finish line. You just you just keep, keep going, going, knowing that there's no finish line. That's success. <laughs> Right, knowing you know that you're working out for, because that's what we do. We work out all summer, hours on hours on hours, not knowing what training yeah. camp's gonna be like. Right, <laughs> like we we're we're working, doing sprints and fucking running the beach, and we're probably gonna be fifteenth man, yeah. right? Just for the 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 hope of. So I had a successful summer, even if I went from fifteen to fourteen. Shit, even if I went from 15 to 15, did I play more minutes than last year? That person say he's successful. Right. right? So it all really, I guess we're all successful in a sense, as long as we're moving forward in life. Mm -hmm. Right? And so from there, it's just using our ability to explore with our knowledge. Mm -hmm. And and that's like, I told Draymond and I said, Man, I wish I was you last year, boy, or the year before. I said, a podcast while being an NBA player in the finals? I'd have been podcasting live. <laughs> live. Been me talking live to my own camera set. And then, as soon as the summer hit, release all that footage. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do? I'm a champ. If I lost... No one ever heard of it, <laughs> right? But I would have, I would have did. I'm going to explore right. all of it. What is the difference between I'm mic'd up for TNT, ESPN, or mic'd up for myself? Because they get the NBA gets consent to mic us up during games. Oh, he's right, going I crazy. Yeah, the thing I don't got to use the NBA. I don't have to use the the like the way you cut it. I don't need to use the footage of the NBA. You use the audio. I use the audio, or I use just me. Yeah. I can just blur out me and just like there's you know me my my brain just moves. Yeah. Like I, I just I just try to think of things like you know and I was like that in the NBA, right? I'm trying to I'm trying to move forward and what is moving forward. Right, I gotta look down at the kids, see what moves they're doing to understand where the game is going. Same thing with, you know, I understood that everybody became media when they pulled out their phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now, hmm, you're pulling out your phone, you're recording, you're technically media, you own that footage. Right, you don't know how to monetize it and do all that. But that became the same concept. So now you just take all these views that I see and then just try to bring it to the show and make it relatable. That's an amazing thought. And I think like, you know, as players, as competitive as we are, it's crazy that we're not in this space. Like you would think that, like I ain't coming on y'all shit, y'all. You know what I mean? I ain't trying to get y'all the ratings. Right? You would have like yeah. uh, that would have been yeah. the thought, yeah. but it's like we're all open yeah. arms. Yeah. Like, nah, come over here. Like, I'll be over there yeah. next week. And it's 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 crazy how the athletes now are just really bonding together. It's true. You got it. Like you said before, the agents sometimes get in the way. I've seen that a few agencies. No, no, no. We don't do. We don't go outside the agency to do a show. 
Shit. On some weirdo shit. And Man, then, like, the huh? people that say that, it's like, bro, you owe me your fucking life. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, dead ass. Like, straight up. I'm like, word the mother, bro. Like, OD shit. But like, I don't blame them. They just... They, they don't have the knowledge. It's it's yeah. It's or no, they don't want to know. It's like this. It's like it's like a safety net. He's like, I'm gonna hide behind them. You know, like, you, you know, know, you know, you are a nigga, man. Gilbert, we appreciate you coming on the show. Appreciate the knowledge. Um, as always, man. Uh, hopefully, this is uh like we have a relationship, mm -hmm. obviously, but uh, just always wanted to sit down and share knowledge and insights with you, and so. Uh, Hopefully we will continue to see you more often. Not even just on some, we ain't just on some like, you know, you you one of those ones, as they say. Mm -hmm. What's the young people say, the old people say. That's an OG yeah, that's, line. That's a, I think that's the OG. OG line. You one of them ones. Well, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. for real, we appreciate you, fam. And uh keep doing you, keep being you, keep opening doors for us and uh keep sharing that knowledge and just just want to say appreciate you again. Uh, mm -hmm. same hey, same man, listen, I know y'all getting into it. Um I quit a few times. Not even gonna lie. <laughs> no, I, I quit. I quit. I quit podcasting. You know, I, I seen, you know, better guests going, right? Um, COVID. You know, like, you know what I mean? It's like, man, I ain't getting guests. Y'all can't get guests. And I, I quit a couple times, but stick with it, right? It's just like anything, yeah. right? You stick with it, and then you know, year after year, you realize, just like it, sports, you know. Where you started and where you are now, totally different yeah, places, right? Sure. You know, I, D Dwayne Wade told me that. He was like, man, you can't come into your second career um, with your accolades from your first career. Yeah. Well, that's a bar. Right? You can't, yeah. nah, you you got to start from yeah. zero. Yeah. But thing, what you do have is more knowledge now. Yeah. So you have a fast pass, mm -hmm. but, you know, don't expect to get a thousand, you know, two thousand, ten thousand. No, no, no. Just keep going. Eventually, everything will catch up with you. So For just sure. keep going. Yes, sir. Thank you. And don't apologize. <laughs> you lose. Right? You apologize, you lost. Right? You know, once you <laughs> you lost. <laughs> <laughs> you lost, man. Listen, there's You got to no... be careful what you say because you sound no. like, somebody sound like they took your advice. They never apologize. No, oh, they... no, he did apologize. Mm -hmm. Kyrie, Kyrie had no. to apologize. There's no, because there, there's no, there's no, there's nobody knows what accountability actually means, right? You want accountability when you see it, you don't let it be free, right? You want me to apologize, change my behavior, be this different person. And then when I become it, you're still talking about who I was before. That's a relationship, bro. That's not, that's not a bad. So that's not no. a bad. That's, that's a relationship. No, that's just bro. period. No, like, just, like, <laughs> like, I was just thinking about like who, 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 like, like what people are like in sports, right? Someone did, did something five years ago, 10 years ago, and they're not that person anymore. But every time you want to like jab at him, you keep bringing them back to that place. So they should leave OJ alone? Mm -hmm. Chris Brown? <laughs> when was the last? When was the, has he hit anybody? Yet? Has he killed anybody since? <laughs> so you say he did it? No, no, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just asking. You know, oh, just, uh, no, 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 I'm just saying. Right. Like, right, like That's you know, right. like what? What are we still like using the same tactics to keep bringing him down? Mm -hmm.